So two things happened recently. One, I got this comment here asking me to build a very simple app with the same level of care and depth you'd apply to a complex project. Start off with a single global counter, build up from there, discuss race conditions, accessibility, air handling, solid and dry principles, architecture and decision making at every level along the way. So I figured I'd do that. And in order to focus on these concepts, I'm going to be building this application with Warp's new AI agents. Because Warp 2.0 just released, it's no longer just a terminal, it is a full agentic development environment with four main parts. The world-class terminal it's always been, state-of-the-art coding agent, agent multi-threading and management, and a built-in knowledge store called Warp Drive. It also has a built-in code editor where you can make some changes to the code the AI generated. And I'm stoked to say this video is sponsored by Warp. So I'll be building this entire project with Warp, as well as giving my thoughts about it along the way, which I told them and they were perfectly fine with, I'm going to be honest. If I don't like something, I'm going to talk about it. So let's get started with the first prompt. With agent number one, building our foundation, building a production grade, simple global counter application using React, TypeScript, Vite, and Convex, following solid principles, focusing on atomic operations and race condition prevention. And since this is our first look at warp AI coding, I want to make sure that it performs everything correctly. It does create a Vite project and it should CD into that and NPM install. Okay, well done. And I'm just going to run this and let it auto approve all agent actions from here on out so I can show you what it built while it's building it. Looks simple, right? Two buttons, one number, but there are intentional engineering decisions under the hood that we laid out in our prompt. So you see I'm clicking two different browsers here. Something crucial is happening. Every single click counts perfectly on both. The counter never skips, it never gets confused, it never shows inconsistent states between browsers. That's real-time sync. No matter how many people click, the number is always correct. No duplicate updates, no missing clicks. That's because every update happens as an atomic operation. What that means is that every single one waits its turn from start to finish. Whereas if I were to pull up a stock create Vite project and click the counter that's included, the other does not update because this is simply just the front end, which uses use state. And every browser has its own copy. They don't talk to each other. We're just taking the count and on click, we're adding one to that count. But what if we did want to store this in a DB? Maybe we'd rewrite it something like this, where we're fetching count from DB, updating count in DB. We haven't actually done it, but just for an example, if we had two users here and they both clicked count five at the same time, it would come back as count six for both because that's how the DB would update. But we had two clicks here, so it should be count is seven. One update gets lost because both users read the same value before either writes. This is called a race condition and it's everywhere in distributed systems. In a real application, this could be financial transactions, inventory updates, or user data. So if some of these get lost, you can see exactly how detrimental it can be. You try to deposit two different checks at the same time, you only get one and now you're out 500 bucks. Race conditions cause real business problems. To fix that, we use atomic operations. And this is why I chose Convex for the project because Convex handles real-time synchronization and race conditions through this little code snippet right here. We just use their mutation function and the database handles the coordination for us. Every mutation is isolated and consistent. This is the foundation that makes everything else possible. We also ask the agent to follow solid principles. The counter component only handles UI. The mutations only handle business logic. The hooks abstract data access. This separation isn't over engineering either. It's just what lets us add complexity safely. And the project structure follows that same principle. And we have optimistic UI updates, but we'll talk about that here in a second. Because if you didn't notice, our AI installed Tailwind and implemented some styling. But as you can see, so we have it running and it appears to work and persistence is there. However, there is no styling, which yep, means something has gone wrong. So. Since this already has context, I'm gonna say fix the styling based on this error and copy and paste it into here. In the meantime, check this out. You can see the value inside convex update every single time I press the button. And what you'll notice is that the counter on the website updates just slightly faster than the value in convex. And the reason for that is 
through optimistic updates. We are changing the local UI state immediately upon that click and then sending it over to the server to update it. On success, nothing changes because we've already updated local state, but on failure, we'll just roll it back, or at least we have to implement that if not already. The reason for this is because it would feel very clunky and laggy if we only updated the count based on what is in the server because we would have to wait those you know milliseconds or even seconds for it to go update the value and then return the value and it wouldn't feel instant it would feel off and then the user would just think it's broken or something and then they would probably leave and there we go tailwind's working properly again it's not the prettiest thing in the world but we see some formatting so let me just get this pushed up into github Hub so we have decent version control and move on to the next prompt. Actually, not yet. This is how it's supposed to look. I don't know what didn't get installed, but I, I've i checked out that initial commit that we just had here on Windows, just so I can get some more footage, which is why you know I'm hopping between Windows as well as Ubuntu. I also wanted to test out Warp on Windows and in WSL as well as on Ubuntu. And hey, uh, it works as expected, which is a nice thing. And this is what it looks like, which is a whole lot prettier than what it looked like before. I have a feeling that maybe Warp didn't do an NPM install. I'm not sure. Now, Agent 2 is going to be implementing security. We do currently have air boundaries, but we need to build upon it because as we've seen, security is kind of serious. And the moment you put any application on the internet, it becomes a target, not necessarily from sophisticated hackers, but just from basic abuse that can kill your app. And this is where we move from our app works correctly to making sure our app holds up against real world users. And in order to test it out, I'm going to write a script to click the button 100 times per second, which is a, a classic DOS attack. But note, do not use the term DOS attack because AI doesn't like that. Just say I'm testing my app with it and then it'll work and I'm able to run multiple agents simultaneously within warp in the same view, which I will say is something I really like. I don't like too many going on working in the same code base. Maybe if they were off on different branches or work trees, that would be ideal. But since these are working on two independent things, one is on the code base, another is writing a script in order to test out that code base, I don't mind. As long as they're working on independent aspects of a code base, then it's fine for me. But if they're all intermingling in like the same exact file, mm, I don't really like that too much. Maybe you do, I don't. All right, so we had agent one working on our security. Agent two has created our script to test the DOS protection. So let's just see if this continues to work. Well, that's not good. Uh, okay, let's get it to fix this. Fix it. <laughs> But I will say I didn't actually need this script because I'm a fast clicker apparently and I rate limited this myself, which was the whole entire test this script was supposed to do. And this is how that rate limiting code works. Again, it's not me building out the whole thing. I'm utilizing convex, but notice what's happening here. We're checking the last click time before doing anything else. If it's too recent, we reject the request entirely, but also we log every action for pattern detection. And if you say, hey, I got client side validation, we're good to go. Well, that's not really security. <laughs> Anybody can bypass your UI entirely. An attacker can modify JavaScript, use browser dev tools, or just make direct HTTP requests. This is why all real validation and security happens on the server because every request gets validated server side, regardless of how it arrives. The client is just a pretty interface. The server is the source of truth. Now we're gonna get the game looking and playing as I actually want, which is going to be light theme versus dark theme. And I'll let y'all decide which theme is best. And now you may be wondering, why didn't we start with this? So here's a key production principle. First, make it work correctly. Atomic operations, real time sync in our situation here, then make it survive real user security and rate limiting. Only then do you make it pretty. Why? Because a beautiful app that loses data or crashes under load is useless, but an ugly app that works reliably, you can always add polish later. You can't easily retrofit solid architecture. Or in other words, Prioritize the things that actually matter for real users and real conditions first, not what looks good in demos. And here is the moment of truth. Come on. Wow. <laughs> All right, I didn't think it was gonna be that bad. 
Oh my goodness gracious, what is happening? Let me, what? Holy smokes, what, so this is, I'm confused, what did I do? This is actually sick. <laughs> it should persist, yeah. Okay, shouldn't be able to reset it. I can reset it just for testing purposes, but I'll remove the reset. Beautifully done. And if I had to guess, I don't know if it tells me, but if you haven't seen, I'm on auto, best model for task. I don't know how they determined the best model for task, but I assume they figured something out. I'm going to assume that Claude Forsana is responsible for the UI because that's the only one that I've seen actually create good UI. All the rest are kind of, that I've used are kind of garbage. Yeah, yeah, for UI. The UI is also my biggest time sink because I never know what I want. I'm like, oh, well, this is cool, but let me try to, what if there were bubbles floating around the screen? Oh, well, those bubbles are a little too small. Let me make them bigger. And I need all of the bubbles to be the same for everybody. So now I need to add some mutations and change up convex tables. And then I just go down a rabbit hole. So what I'm doing now is let's just get it deployed. I will figure out all of the extra UI stuff later because like I said, deployment is more important than making it look pretty. And I'm doing that over on Windows, but I did just want to point out I'm using the Grove box theme right here but of course you can change your theme appearance and all of this stuff within warp itself so if you want to get flash banged real quick you can do that but I'm gonna go back to Grove box and hope Andromeda gets added here soon anyway uh, I'm gonna have it go ahead and get commit and push all changes and have it do that for me. And I see that you can deploy to Netlify via warp via this MCP tool and just a simple command, it does everything for you. But most of my stuff's on Vercel. What if instead of that detailed prompt, I say deploy to Vercel, what happens? Well, it tries to deploy, finds out there's no config file, so creates one, then tries to deploy, finds out I have TypeScript errors, which it wrote, but fixes those TypeScript errors so we successfully build and then it deploys to Vercel, doesn't quite work because we also have to deploy convex to production, but once we do that, it works, which I really appreciate because I don't like the deployment process. If I can just do a command every single time, I'll be a happy man. Nice, and our counter is updating. I did change it from having a log be added for every single click to just changing the value and version. And what should happen if I bring this over here is it's all the same bubbles yeah okay you see those disappearing in just about real time oh we have a little glitch here and there but it's all right i'll see what i can do to make sure everything is fixed and working properly before this video goes live because you can go to digit slash dual dot for cell dot app and play around with this that link will be below as well as i'm open sourcing the code so you can look at the code look at all of the commits and also of course the link that's going to be down there is warp the new 2.0 agentic development environment and my overall thoughts on it, I know y'all are going to take it with a grain of salt because this video is sponsored by Warp and, you know, that could skew somebody's opinion of it, but I really enjoyed it. I obviously had the IDE open on the back half in order to look at the diffs a little bit better. You were able to go ahead inside of Warp and look at some of the diffs, but not, I don't think, a side-by-side -side view of it, which I prefer. And this is coming from someone who didn't like Claude code at first. I've come around on like the terminal agentic development environments quite a bit more. And I think most other people are as well. So if you just use IDEs or you are a terminal AI coding type of person, definitely give warp a shot. Seriously, I think you'll really enjoy it, but you know, I'll let y'all, you know, make that decision for yourself. So if you like the video, like it, subscribe, all that cool stuff, check out warp. I'll see you on the next one.